Hello and welcome to Ashton Gate Stadium. My name is Toby Osborne and I am lead commentator for Bristol City's Robins TV. And I'm delighted to say that joining me today is Chris Denner, Chief Community Officer for the Robins Foundation, who incidentally are celebrating uh, their 10th anniversary of education courses. Uh, Chris, first of all, how are you? I'm very good, very good. Good. Um, so for those that don't know too much about the Robbins Foundation and, and the work it does in regards to those courses, uh, can you give us a bit of an insight into the courses first of all and what they mean for, for those that take them? Yeah, sure. So the Robbins Foundation is the official charity of the football club where we are there to serve the community of Bristol and the surrounding areas um, in any which way we can to support um, anyone aged five all the way up to 102, I think is our eldest participant. Um, but in terms of education specifically, we run BTEC courses um, at level two and three and we also run a number of uh, degree courses as well to support that transition into higher education and the courses are set up to be practical practical in nature so that the young people that are coming onto the courses are actually engaged in some practical manner um, obviously the education aspect is really important to us that they actually leave the courses with um, a qualification and that's extremely important again to support that progression route but the, the courses are set up to inspire and engage young people that in a in a different setting and in a different way that maybe they're used to in a traditional school or college and um, post-16 provider with the aim to get them into employment uh, apprenticeships or onto higher education into the into the future. We spoke to some of the sports lecturers about their time at the foundation and about the anniversary of the education courses and here's what they had to say. Um, what I think is the main difference is that actually it's not students are just not a number here. We definitely care about our students as a whole. We want them to develop as a whole. It's not just about academics for us. We want them to achieve whatever they want to be in the future and we try and support them to go on to that, whether that is sport or, for instance, one of my students went on to become a lawyer, which we never thought would be possible. But through this course we found that out and developing them as a whole is what our main aim is. Yeah, so I'll be an assistant coach on the course. There's a coach for each team, so I'm going to be kind of the person that can help each coach. I'll do like the bits and bobs, the side things to free up more of their time. Um, I'll fill in in training sessions when people need time off or just serve as the intermittent. So like when the students might not want to go to their coach, I'm going to be able to bridge that gap as someone who's been through the course and can relate to the struggles or you know anything they're going through. University life is tough sometimes, so having someone who's been through it, I think is going to really help them. In terms of the actual education course, we offer a variety of courses um, for people from many backgrounds come and join us. So obviously we've got the boom team, um, we've got the, uh, some media, and then we've got the level twos, and then we've got the coaching course this year as well as the extended diploma. So depending on the GCSEs you get, you can come and study from a wide range and you can leave and go and study whatever you want to. So it's a real good platform or, or a stepping stone into your next avenue. Um, I've been here about two years and ironically it's through Millie that I found out about the job. Um, a total change of career for me so basically my role now is I would say overseeing all the administration side of the uh, Robbins Foundation so supporting the education side the lecturers also supporting the delivery team um, and yeah basically sort of overseeing every day-to-day -day things that need to be done. A bit of background with, with Millie, she did the um, BTEC Level um, 3 um, course and um, when she left school, she, she didn't enjoy school, she found it difficult. Um, we found this um, course, she loves football and it just seemed to give her everything that she wanted and learning alongside as well, so still continuing with her football along with being able to, to continue with her education and it was an amazing two years for her. Not long ago, the students here at the Robbins Foundation had their annual media day, taking photos in the new kit for next season and welcoming along the new intake of students in September. Let's have a look at what went on. What made you choose this course in the first place? The opportunity of t coaching disabled people and becoming more of a person in myself in sports. I like sport. I like getting to know about sport and I like doing well in the education. So. So I chose the course because I wanted to do something I enjoyed and I thought like having a mix of them like practical and like theory is good because it's like secondary school kind of, it's fun. Well, I support the club and I want to learn more about the sport, get degrees from it and see where it takes me in life. I chose the course because I have a love for the game and just want to better my knowledge. 
this club, like, I've supported this club for all my life and like it's just such an opportunity to be able to be around it and maybe go into it further on. Um, I've always had a passion for sports and this just seemed like the exact perfect college that I'd like to go to and just represent as well as playing. Uh, how have you enjoyed the course so far? Out of ten, probably nine. Covid's obviously disrupted it, but apart from that, it's been, been good, yeah. I've enjoyed it. It's good to get into new people and see what they're like. You have that, like, it's it's a lot less strict at land school, so you have that ability to do what you want to do. Are there any experiences that stand out for you as your favourite? Probably ends, yes. Like bonding with our team and bonding with our classmates and getting to know each other. It's probably either NTS or just the practical sessions as a whole. Playing the football as well as our Bristol Sports Centre in this kind of test of seasons. Uh, and what are you most looking forward to doing? I think playing, like rep representing Bristol City is just going to be so cool and I just can't wait to get started. Same again, just playing, representing, just doing what I love doing and playing football. And what advice would you give to the students that are starting next year? To be fun, be yourself. If you like sport, then it's course be for you. Don't think about it too much and just go straight in, not worry about getting judged or bullied. Just don't worry about like not making friends and just if you put your head down, just, you can get on with it. And, and you mentioned it there uh, briefly with regards to the, the actual creation of the education courses. How did that come about in the first instance? Yeah, so I think the, the EFL Trust uh, approached us to run a pilot with six other clubs or five other clubs at that point to say how can we start to link up some of the programmes that we're doing at a younger age in secondary school and primary school and provide that progression route on and use football as a tool to engage them. Um, so at that point as a as an organisation we said actually we, we want to be part of that so yeah we were one of the first six to do it um, and what's kind of stayed constant throughout is that we take on all of the delivery of the program so we're not based in a school you know we're based here at Ashton Gate and other centres um, we do deliver the courses ourselves to make it as inspiring as and engaging as possible um, and we're not miss we're not sir you know we are Chris we are Toby we we can we try to relate to these young people albeit you know I've got some great hairs that probably don't relate but it's trying to trying to break down the stigma of education being um, boring or you know just something that people have to go through and the analogy that I use sometimes is actually with with a sat mouth you know that young people know that they want to become something but how they actually get there there's many different routes and we just try to kind of say well actually you could do this route you could do that route by doing x yeah. y and z so um yeah essentially is to provide an alternative provision for young people of bristol yeah that's brilliant and across the last 10 years has there been any standout moments for you in, in particular particular case with with a student for instance there's, yeah, there's, there's, there's many. I think the, the most proud moment is when we get to the end of an academic year yeah. um, and that tends to be quite a reflective moment for both staff and, and student um, and also parent as well. And hearing the messages and um, the, the kind of feedback of how certain people have developed and some of that is going to be education, some of that might be practical and you know they're really engaged in that but it's also about the, the person and you know someone might have developed their confidence or um, you know developed something within themselves that they didn't think they could. So we always hear of stories of you know people that go away and have done things that they never thought they could because of the experiences that they've got here. Um, and we've actually, over 50% of our delivery team are graduates of our education provision. So we've actually got students chasing our heels, chasing our tails for the, our jobs now, which, you know, is scary. You never know what a student's gonna come and talk to you about yeah. or you know who you might meet, what you might do, what you might get to experience. And I think that is, the, one of the main reasons of me being here so long and also you know our, our sports lecturers and our other staff de you know developing those relationships and being here um, so yeah every day is a new experience a new learning opportunity and I think again going back to the development of me personally I think if that wasn't there I don't know if I'd still be in the same role but um, yeah that that unknown every day when you get out of bed makes you get out of bed yeah and I'm sure across the last 10 years with the education courses, there's been many contributors along the way. Anybody in particular stand out for you that's done a lot for, for the Robbins Foundation? 
Um, yeah, there's been many. I, I think it's more, you know, partners and organisations that have supported along the way. You know, we're sat in one, being Ashton Gate, Bristol Sport and, and Bristol City that offer the, the opportunities that no one else could. So, you know, without that, I don't think the students would be engaged as much as what they would. But, you know, so a massive thanks to them. But, you know, the education providers across Bristol that we work with, um, with Cabot Learning Federation, Ashton Park, UWE, to name a few, they're without their backing, we wouldn't be able to put these courses on. Um, yeah. Yeah, so the Robins Foundation is the, it's the charitable arm of the football club. Well, it's associated with the football club. Um, and it's there to promote health, social inclusion, um, and education within, within the whole of the city. And as you know, particularly around South Bristol and then the whole of the city and the region. Um, and it's there to connect people with with, with the football club and also provide opportunities for people. It's got lots of passionate fans, but for me it's how do you use that to then make a difference where other people can't do something within the city. So uh, my challenge has always been to the, the staff and everyone here is to do things that other people can't do. So the, if you're doing something that someone else would do, if you weren't doing it, it's probably not the best use of our time to do something where we can make a real difference because people will interact with it because of the football club and everything else. So how can you use the, for want of a better word, the brand of the football club to make a difference and, and really have an impact on people? The education that the Robbins Foundation provides is, is, is key because for me what it does is it, it attracts, it's what we've talked about before, it attracts people into education who wouldn't necessarily do it otherwise. I think that's really important. So not only do they get great results, but they almost do the reverse of cherry picking. Sometimes they take the students that wouldn't necessarily be in education otherwise and give them, you know, it gives them the motivation to come into education because they want to be connected to the activity of football and the stadium itself. So that, that's a real, a real key thing for me. And I think you can see that for everybody that is on the courses. They seem to be really proud of that fact. I've been a trustee for nearly 10 years, I think. So it's, I've known those guys a long time. Chris has been here probably longer than I have because he started with football in the community. So, and, and that's, that's great as well because he understands why you're doing it and what it's about. And he's seen it from, from all kind of angles. So he's, I mean, Chris is, is brilliant and he does a great job with the education bit. Dan started in the, um, the academy and moved across and also has helped grow it into what it is now so I've, I've known the guys a long time and you therefore work closely together and it's something you're passionate about so we naturally have conversations in terms of how can you direct it how do they want to direct it can you help make it better than it is but I mean it's, it's improving and growing all the time it's, it makes you really proud cause, and I think that's what the, I tried to say at the start is it's you've got something that is it's a professional football club people look at it as a certain thing lots of people connect with it anyway so you've you've got this thing that no one else has how do you make an impact with that and for me that's the most important bit so if if someone has had education they wouldn't have had otherwise and then you can see what they've gone on to achieve and the positive impact that's had that's just one small part of lots of impacts it has whether that's in the, the social inclusion sessions some of the disability stuff it does it's it, it's multifaceted and it's across a wide range so all those small impacts together make a massive difference. So you can't help but be proud of it because that's what you want to use it for. In terms of what makes the, the Robbins Foundation stand out from traditional forms of education, I know you've touched on it in previous answers. I guess for me at school, I wasn't necessarily given the kind of uh, the, the range of options that perhaps the, the foundation would give and you may be sort of stifled into following a certain path. What would you say makes the Robbins Foundation so unique in their education courses? Yeah, I think it's um, it's three things. It's the uh, opportunities. So uh, you know, I alluded to it that you know, supporting on a match day, getting work experience here at the club, um, within the community. That's something that is on our doorstep and is not something that you know is down the road that we have to go and try and find it's there it's rural it's in an industry that most of these young people want to go and work in but most importantly those opportunities also um, support the transferable skills so even if students don't want to work in sport and they want to work in 
uh, technology or, or um, anything else, those skills that they learn while being here are transferable. I think it also comes back to the environment, you know, just turning up here every day to, to study is not a bad environment and it probably does become a little bit numb after a while, especially if you've been here a while, but I think without the environment then that doesn't engage the students as well, um, especially linked with the opportunities and I think it's also the people. Um, you know, the people that we have delivering these courses are inspirational, they're role models, they're here to support that young person. And especially with smaller groups, we actually really get to know our students well to help them develop in whichever area that they want to. And the foundation and the education side of things has come so far across the last 10 years. Plans for the next 10 years? No pressure, of course. You don't have to lay out your strategy or anything like that, but plans for the next 10 years? Yeah, I think that's, you know, that's difficult, especially yeah. proven in the last 18 months with the, the pandemic. But I think it's for us, whichever area we develop, it has to be for the right reasons and organic. So we tend to listen and get ideas from the young people because there's no point us setting up a programme or putting something on that they don't want to engage in. So actually working with the community to say what are the needs and we'll support you in that. So whether that's traineeships, further BTEC courses, uh, and also degree courses, then I think it has to be organic, it has to be for the community, but we'll, we'll listen to them and grow accordingly, I suppose. But yeah, keeping the essential, the real core values at the heart of everything we do is going to be essential to that growth. Absolutely. Uh, and how proud are you, if you had to summarise, of what has been achieved over the last 10 years? Yeah, so when, if I look back now to when I was offered a YTS or, or uh, a teaching provision and they say, right, in 10 years' time you're going you're gonna to be here, I, I, yeah, I wouldn't have believed them. So, yeah, extremely proud. I'm, I'm proud of staff, um, you know, the, the partners that we work with, the students that have come through the door because ultimately they've done the work, um, the support of parents, guardians at home. And I think if I look back at the last 10 or, you know, 17 years, if someone had said I'd be sat here with the success that we've had and the outcomes that we've had, I would have, would have pinched myself. And I just hope that, you know, going forward, that's the same and we keep those, those values. And don't forget why we're doing it. And I think that's, that's integral to everything. And I think this will make you realise why you do it and it will hit home a little bit as well. And just before we finish, we, ha we have a video we'd like to show you, Chris. So I'm just going to angle the laptop around. So Chris has been here since day dot. Um, obviously, this is my fourth academic year here, but he's been here since the very start. Um, he's built the programme um, with, with some founding members as well. Um, but it, from my understanding, he's been here since uh, sports lecturing from the level two up to level three. Um, and now being obviously head of education, um, he's developed and strived this course to where it is now. Um, we are expanding this year and that's down to him and obviously the team as well. But he is forefront of that and uh, he's a real big driving force as to why we are achieving where we are. And um, he's just doing a really good job, I think. I think Chris is a brilliant role model. He's been here as long as it's been around and his leadership is second to none. He definitely understands what it takes to develop as a sports person in this industry and also actually understands students' feelings and then sports lecturers and also high up as well. He's definitely somebody who you can go to with a problem and he figures it out quite quick. Um, I think he's a great leader and um, leads by example really. Um, he is approachable, he's down to earth, he's got a lot of experience, he's worked here for a long time and most importantly he's extremely passionate about providing um, a great um, experience for all young people to, uh, to be able to be part of and enjoy. Yeah so I think Chris um he is Mr. Robbins Foundation, you know, head of education. He, he kind of lives and breathes it, I guess. Um, he, you know, I guess he, yeah, in terms of his values and everything he does, I think that kind of filters down through the team. Um, yeah, really strong leader um, and someone that I know certainly has helped develop me and I think has certainly helped develop others within the team from a staffing perspective, but also has had a massive impact on students as well across his, his time at the foundation. Yeah, Chris has been really supportive to myself over the last few years. Um, over the group of students that I've had and previous groups I've had, Chris has been really supportive with those students that potentially struggle or have slightly different backgrounds and things like that. He's been visible to them, he's given them time, he's given them a space to feel safe and I think that's really reflected and the students really appreciate that. In terms of me, he's, he's always there, he's a sounding board when we need him to be. Um, and he also sort of runs the department um, smoothly. Um, well, Chris, you know, he's, he's got a number of qualities and I think 
the thing that I the thing that I see in him a lot is is this kind of burning desire to always go after the next thing and make the next thing happen. And I guess if you look at the growth of the foundation over the over that time, um, that that's probably testament to to him. Wow. The uh, Chris initial reaction to that. Yeah, I'm I'm blown away. I think you know, this, as with everyone, is you know you never take um, you know nice things well. I suppose you never kind of think that about yourself. But you know, as much as they can be very positive about my uh, myself, is that you know I wouldn't be half as successful or um, be able to do what I do if it wasn't for those members of staff to you know help and support around what I'd. But no, it's incredible to hear those those comments and that feedback and uh, yeah. A huge thank you to those. Well, you're very modest, uh, and congratulations on 10 years. You're an outstanding role model. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much for talking to me today. Thank you.